Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing a discovery coming from this somewhat interesting and somewhat intriguing star system right behind me, the star system known as Gamma Columbi. The star system that up until recently was not actually believed to be anything special or anything unusual, and was just seen as a typical binary approximately 870 light years away from us. But turns out, completely by accident, the scientists behind this study you can find in the description below discovered that it was very unusual. It seems to be the first known example to us of a star system with at least one star being referred to as a stripped core star, a star lacking the outer shell that was very likely removed by its partner a long time ago. And one day this is going to result in a specific type of a supernova, a relatively rare type of a supernova that's sometimes referred to as type 1b. And actually, maybe let's discuss that first because when it comes to supernova, their names are a little bit confusing. And so trying to distinguish these types of supernova and understanding what causes them is actually going to help us understand why this star is important as well. So generally when it comes to observations of these very large explosions, supernova, the scientists generally divide them into two types, with the third type we've discussed in one of the older videos in the description being exceptionally rare. But normally it's either type 1 supernova or type 2. And just as a side note, the name in here is even worse than with some of the other astronomical concepts. They definitely could have done a better job here. Anyway, so type 1 supernova will never have any hydrogen lines, suggesting that there is no hydrogen involved and the star exploding is basically made out of everything but hydrogen. In all stars, hydrogen is always the outer layer, with helium, carbon, neon, oxygen, silicon and iron representing other layers beneath that. And so if the star explodes and it doesn't have any hydrogen, it's always categorized as type 1. Type 2 supernova, on the other hand, will have at least some hydrogen, which normally suggests that the origin of this particular supernova came from a massive star that eventually collapsed on itself, resulting in a large explosion. Normally these are also much more powerful than type 1. And type 2 supernova will usually have a few classifications as well. But right now we're really concerned with type 1. And the most common type 1 supernova is what's known as type 1a. This is a result of a white dwarf reaching a certain mass, usually about 1.4 solar masses, and then basically exploding, producing the emissions without any hydrogen. These are actually really common, they're some of the most common supernova out there, and they're actually quite useful because they generally produce relatively similar emissions. And because of this they're also used as what's known as the space candles, allowing the scientists to determine distances to various objects. But type 1 supernova can also be produced by other, more massive stars that are not white dwarfs. In other words, you can actually have a supernova that does not have any hydrogen lines, or doesn't possess any hydrogen when the star explodes, but the star itself might be much more massive and much larger than your typical white dwarf. For example, extremely powerful, very bright and very hot wolf Raya stars, some of the most powerful stars in the universe, and also some of the brightest objects in the universe as well, have this very unusual property where they basically start to throw off huge amounts of matter from the surface, basically expelling all of their hydrogen layer and even other layers, leaving behind just the core of the star itself, with the core eventually reaching the point where it no longer can sustain itself, and then goes supernova, leaving behind a solar mass black hole. And sometimes these supernova are also referred to as a stripped core supernova. Basically because the star that explodes is essentially just the core of the star, with the outer shell completely gone, resulting in a large cloud around the star that expands outwards. But in terms of the observations using various telescopes and looking at spectroscopy here, type 1b and type 1c supernova will generally not have any silicon in them compared to type 1a, while also being much lower in luminosity and even being redder, and generally being relatively more difficult to detect. But type 1b and 1c supernova will often show quite a lot of oxygen, calcium and magnesium, Mostly because when the star explodes, it's made out of slightly different material. In contrast, type 1a has a lot of iron. With type 1c supernova being slightly more advanced and not even having any helium on the inside either. In other words, if you were to remove the hydrogen here, you would get type 1b. And if you were to remove helium as well, you would get type 1c. But that's a very general category and a very general explanation. The reality is as always a little bit more complicated. And so not so long ago, the scientists were studying various binary stars, trying to see if any of these stars were what's known as variable stars, changing in brightness occasionally with a certain predictable period. But while looking through the data, they found that one of the stars was exhibiting very unusual emissions. 
At first they thought it was a regular pulsating star, basically a variable star with a relatively predictable period, but then they realized that the spectrum here was extremely different from anything they've ever seen. The star, Gamma Columbi, was actually missing the hydrogen shell. Now if this was a bright wolf Raya star, it would make sense. It basically was too powerful so it expelled the shell like so many other stars we've seen before. But it wasn't one. It was just your regular star. A really massive star, a somewhat bright star, and a somewhat hot star, possessing the brightness of a typical B-type subgiant, approximately 13,000 Kelvin in temperature, and roughly around 24 million years old. But normally we would expect these stars to be really massive, sort of like Betelgeuse or even more massive than that, somewhere around 20 or 30 solar masses. This one wasn't though, it was only about 5 solar masses. It also possessed a relatively high magnetic field of approximately 95 Gauss, but more importantly, it was extremely bright, and this brightness was very likely coming from helium, because the star was missing hydrogen completely. By definition, it was a stripped core star. But unlike wolf Raya stars that we've seen before, the core itself was not as active and was not producing these very powerful winds. And so the question was, where did the envelope go? Where's all the hydrogen? It doesn't seem to be around the star, so what exactly happened here to make it that way? And the answer here is, in the star system itself. This, after all, seems to be a binary system, with a partner approximately 19,000 astronomical units away from the main star or approximately 0.14 light years. But I guess more intriguing is the type of a star. It's a G-type, very very similar to our own sun, almost exactly the same actually. And it does seem to possess a little bit too much hydrogen on the inside. And that's maybe how the star lost its hydrogen. The partner might have been much closer before, stealing and expelling a lot of the hydrogen in the process, literally removing the outer shell, only leaving helium behind. In this case, the scientists calculated that the original star was maybe about 12 solar masses, but in the process it lost about 7 solar masses, with some of the mass possibly being absorbed by the partner, and some of the other mass very likely just being thrown off into the distance, forming a relatively thin hydrogen shell that at least for now is kind of invisible. But if future observations do discover the shell around the star, it will definitely provide more evidence for this particular explanation. But the fact that nearly 7 solar masses was stripped out of a star that was only 12 solar masses in total is kind of surprising. As a matter of fact, it's never really been seen before, and by itself already forms a bit of a mystery. And since the partner in this case is also kind of far away, much farther away than in previous binary systems where we've seen this occur, it definitely adds to the mystery of what exactly happened to the gas around the star in order to strip the outer shell and in order to expose the core of the star itself. And in this case, the calculations also suggest that this is going to be a relatively short period of time for the star, because it's most likely not going to sustain itself for more than 10,000 years. And so this could be one of the closest supernova next to us in the next few thousands of years, and possibly even the first to occur much earlier than other stars. And so since the star is already burning helium, it means that it's already approaching that last few thousands of years before it goes supernova. And because the star is only 24 million years old, with the supernova occurring within the next 10,000 years, we kind of got lucky in catching it right before it does so. Or at least someone in the future might catch it. It's probably not going to go supernova within the next few hundreds of years. But the resulting push from the supernova might actually affect the G-type star orbiting it in some really surprising ways. I mean, this is as sun-like as it gets when it comes to mass and luminosity, and so one day the star might even start forming planets around it. And so the fact that there is a supernova happening so close to it is already intriguing for so many reasons. Will it have unusual planets forming around it? What sort of a system will this evolve into in the next few hundreds of millions of years? Might it actually have terrestrial planets enriched in various heavy elements forming when all of this settles millions and billions of years in the future? Intriguing questions that we don't really have answers to just yet. Still, a pretty exciting first ever discovery and a potential discovery of the next supernova in the vicinity of the solar system. Although at a distance of 900 light years away from us, it's not really going to cause any danger to anything around us or to the solar system or any planets. And in terms of the actual scientific discoveries, right now the scientists really want to understand how these binary systems evolve and what actually happens to these stars as they lose their envelope and as they produce these exposed cores that eventually lead to these unusual supernova that once in a while we see here and there. For now though, I guess there's really not much else to say. We'll talk more about these discoveries in some of the future videos, and specifically once we discover something else about unusual supernova or unusual stars somewhere out there that doesn't really meet our expectations. 
Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, check out previous videos on a similar topic in the description below, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.